There'll be flash here, six, lesson eight, working with sound and video. In this lesson, we'll learn how to do the following, to import sound files, edit sound files, use Adobe Media Encoder CS6, understand video and encode, audio encoding options, play external audio from your Flash project, customize options on the video playback component, create and use cue points, work with video that contains alpha channels, and embed video in your Flash project. So I'm just going to look at what we're going to do today. So I'm just going to click on the end file. Okay. Good day. My name is Paul Smith. I'm the zoo director here at Sherwood Wildlife Preserve. Before you go into the park, we'd like you to learn a few things about the amazing animals we have here at Sherwood. So click on a video, click on a sound, have a great day at the park. Okay, so that's our video here. And notice that when we, let's say, we, we go open up this file and then we click on the different... The Magellanic Penguin's oh, habitat yeah. on the coast of South America can actually get quite warm in the summer months. Okay, and you can click on any sound and you can get the different video. Mandrels have large cheek... Tigers, lions... The typical lion diet can... And if I click on the sound one, I can get the different sounds. Okay, so, so notice we can create different sounds for our video here. So let's go on to our start. So we're going to go to start here. Okay, and we're going to just open up our start file. Okay, and over here, so let's just uh, maximize this file over here. So this is the start file. Let's cl close this. This is the start file. Just, and like we always do, we do a save as to make sure we don't overwrite our old start file. We're going to go working copy. So 0A working copy and save. Okay. So just got to replace this one. Okay, and got to save this file. So this is our working copy here. And we're going to just leave this as a, as a working copy. Notice that the layers has already, have already been created for you. The labels have been already created for you. And then um, and in the action script, uh, some of the action script has been created for you. Well, there's some uh, buttons that have been created and that's done for you already. Okay, so let's, let's learn how to import sound. So let's go to file, okay, and then we got import, import to library. Okay, so this is our start folder here. Okay, and we got just come over here and then we can see all the different files here. Okay, and we got just got, uh, import the monkey sound, which is the monkey.wave. Where is the monkey.wave file? Uh, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, sounds. So monkey.wave and we're going to open it. Okay, so open already. Now notice over here the sound has already been imported here, okay? So the sound is already imported and you can see the sound wave uh, displayed here in our library. So let's double click this. Okay, you can see there's a sound wave here. And it will show you all the different information like uh, uh, what was the recording frequency, is it mono, stereo, 8-bit, how, how long is it, how big is the file, and that sort of thing. Okay, so let's just import a few more files. Import to library. Okay, we've got import the lion. Okay, we've got to import the elephant, lion, African beat. Okay, so it's got to select everything here and open this one. And we're going to import all these things. Okay. So once that's done, we got to create another folder for you, for us to keep everything uh, neatly organized. So click on the sounds here. Come here, come here. Move to sounds. Okay. African Latin beat, Af Afro Latin beat sounds. Okay. So, so we got our sounds over here. So we got about total about uh, okay. This should be one more sound, which is the elephant. Okay, let's move this over here. So all the five sounds are over here. So how do we put our sounds in the timeline? Okay, so let's just select the videos in our timeline here, and we got just create a new layer called sounds. So just double click this and call it sounds. Okay, let's just select the first keyframe over here. And we're just going to come here and drag the Afro-Latin beat MP3. 
over here. Okay, actually no, sorry, over here to the stage. So notice that the whole sound is imported to the to the to the stage to the, our timeline here. Okay, and notice if I go to properties here. Okay, now I'm gonna select the first frame here. Notice over here it changes to Afro Latin beat. It shows what is the name of the sound that's gonna be playing in our timeline over here. Okay, so uh, make sure your sync is select stream. Now this the term, now, now we got few options stream event start stop and stream tells us to synchronize our sound with the timeline so that the right sound is played at the right time. Okay, so now notice what happens when we when we move our 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 play back here. Notice there's a sound being played. Okay, or we press the sound. Okay, we press this one. So actually the sound is actually played along our timeline. Okay, so let's just test it out. Test the movie and we test. Okay, unfortunately you can hear that the sound only plays just for a short while because it's cut off, okay. Because um, there just aren't enough, there's just not enough um, uh, frames to play because once it arrives to this frame, notice there's a stop, right. So it stops here, so it only plays from here to here. Okay, so how can we solve this? Okay, what we can do is this, we can increase the number of frames for it to play. Okay, so um, okay, make sure you don't select anything. Okay, then we just gotta come here and choose insert timeline frame. Notice there are more frames being added here. Let me just go and move this up. So I'll just call modify, so notice timeline, uh, insert timeline frame. So I'm gonna just add some more frames so they are about until they are about 50 frames. So I'm just gonna press F5, function at five or F5, depending on your how your keyboard is set up. Okay, so I'm gonna move all this all the way into frame 50. Okay, so all the way into frame 50. Okay, I'm just going, okay. Okay, so just move this all the way up here. Okay, just move. Okay, so frame 50 is over here, okay. So frame 50 is here. So let's test the movie again. Okay. So I'm going to show you again. Okay. So there, there you have it. So it just it plays because there's there's more frames here. It can. Um, it can actually be played with more frames. Okay, so but the thing is, it just stops at the right at the end over here. So what we can do is that we can actually edit our sound within Flash. We don't have to use uh, software like Adobe Audition. We can just do it with simple editing within Flash. So let's just select the first keyframe from our layer here, and in the Inspector's property, we just click on the pencil button over here. So notice there's this envelope over here. Okay. So in the edit envelope dialog box, this shows the waveform. Okay, so if we play it out, we can actually play out the, the, the sound over here. And there are special effects. We can choose left channel, right, fade left to right, fade in, fade out, custom, and that sort of thing. Okay, and over here we got we can zoom in, zoom into our waveform, or we can zoom out. Okay. And over here, we can choose the view. We can view, view, view it in seconds, like half a second, one second, 1.5 seconds, or you can view it in number of frames. Okay, so let's just choose number of frames. Okay, and let's zoom out all the way until you can see everything. Okay, so let's leave it here. So it shows about 240 frames, so about 10 seconds. Okay, and so we gotta come over to here. We gotta choose frames, and we gotta just uh, drag it all the way to frame forty-five. Okay, so let's zoom in a bit more. So we just gotta drag this one all the way to about frame forty-five. Okay. So it shortens it to about you know about uh, forty-five frames in length, and then just click OK. 
notice over here it the the waveform stops right over here so it only plays for 45 seconds okay now the problem is now is uh, now you play it right it just stops halfway very abruptly so we like to have something that uh, allows us to uh, fade out so it's just so it seems uh, it, it is, there's a more uh, it's, a, it's a gradual transition to the next uh, section of our presentation here so let's just select the first keyframe of the sounds layer and we got just uh, edit this one again so we've edited this a bit okay so uh, so let's zoom in to see the end part here okay so let's zoom in a bit here okay so we got to click the horizontal frame okay so let's zoom in okay zoom out okay so let's go we got to click over here okay so notice there's a control point over here box okay then we got to come over here and we got to just drag this on down okay so this actually shows you the volume so this one when you place the volume it actually goes down okay so we got to do the same thing for the other channel over here one is top one is left the bottom one is right okay so now the volume level has gone down to 0%. So let's just play a bit. So notice this gradually uh, fades out. Okay, so just click OK and that's done. Okay, so let's say we don't like the sound. Okay, so we just say, we okay, I, I, I like this sound, but I don't like it again. So we've got to click on the Properties Inspector again. So just have to change it and that's it. Just choose something else. Say, I don't like the sound. Notice I put none, no sound is there. We got, if I like something else, for example, I want African beat, I can just click it over here. And that's it. Okay, so notice that, uh, okay, notice that over here that the sound is back there, the, all the fades, all, the, all the, the editing has been removed already. So, okay, and we got just got to customize it again the same way. So let's do it one more time. We got to come over here, let's zoom out a bit. Okay, let's move it to about 45 frames okay 45 frames okay and we just gonna click over eh, about midway through here then just gonna put this on over here oops this one goes down here okay so that's it so we play it up yep then we just click OK and we can see that the sound has just stopped over there. Okay, so now um, the other thing about sound is this, is that you can have high quality and low quality recording sound, but the problem is with high quality sound is that the higher quality you have, the bigger your file size is. And we don't want to burden our users with having to download like a 50 megabyte file or a 2 megabyte file, especially if he's using a mobile device. So let's go over to File, Publish Settings. Okay. So let's click on the flash box over here. Okay. And then we have the audio stream and audio event settings here. Okay. Uh, okay. So notice this audio stream it says MP3 16 kilobits per second, mono, mono. Okay. So it's mono settings here. Okay. So let's just click the audio stream settings to open the things here to the sound settings. Let's change the bit rate to 64 kilobits per second. Okay, so we want a higher quality uh, sound rate and deselect this. Okay, so deselect this to stereo to mono so that we say we want to have a stereo setting for our, for our sound. So it's higher kilobits per second. Uh, in stereo okay let's click on the audio event settings here okay so let's change the bit rate to 64 kilobits per second and we got uh, and deselect this convert stereo to mono settings so it, again it's high quality settings okay the reason for this is because uh, it happens that our, our African beat mp3 file it relies on stereo effects so we still need to keep the left and right channel now bit rate is measured in kilobits per second so it's a quality of the sound. Uh, it's a higher the bit rate, the high quality sound. Okay, uh, so there is always a trade-off when you create all your flash presentations. Okay, so let's override sound settings. Okay, to override 
the sound settings over here. Okay, so the sound settings, our published settings, will determine how all our sounds are exported. Okay, so over here with Flash Player and everything over here. Okay, um, you can also, by the way, you can change your target play with Flash 11 or Flash 9, by the way, depending on where you want to target your video or sound at, on what device. Okay, so let's click OK and control, do a test movie, to a test. Notice there's a little fade off sound as well. Now, okay. Now notice now we got our buttons here. Right? Now what, the next thing we're going to do is to add sounds to our buttons. Okay, so let's just close this one. Okay, so let's go to our stage here. Okay, okay, actually our library. Okay, we can do both in the stage and library. So we've got to click on sound button number one. Okay, so over here in sound button number one, um, we've come into our sound editing uh uh, symbol editing mode, okay, there's nothing else except our symbol and we've got our three layers here for up, over, down, hit states okay, so we're just going to insert one more new layer and call it sounds select the down layer, down frame okay, and we've got to do insert timeline keyframe okay, so we've got to drag monkey wave onto the stage okay just drag it here. So now this, you can't see it here, but it's actually, once you put a sound on the stage, it actually goes to part of your timeline over here. So you can see there's a, there's a little tiny little waveform over here. Okay. So let's select the down frame over here and go to the properties inspector. Okay. So in the, in the sync option, we've got to choose start. Now what happens in start is that, uh, that it will continue playing even though we've only got two frames. Why does it just starts playing the 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 sound? Okay, so let's finish off this off and just test it out. Okay, so let's just click click on this. Oops. Uh, okay, it doesn't work. Okay, so that doesn't work. So let's what's let's see what's wrong with that. Okay, sound button one. Oh, sorry, we click on the wrong one. It's not this one. Let's try it one more time. It's not this one. Okay, we've got to click on this one. So, notice this has no sound, no sound, but the first one had sound, so let's click it. Okay, so that's it. So, we got to just do the same thing for button two and three. So, let's come over to the library here and then come over here. So, let's do the same thing. Sounds. Here, okay, we've got uh, insert timeline keyframe. Now, to add a keyframe uh, without using the pull down menu, you can just press F6. Okay, so the second one would be, okay, lion. Okay, so let's take a lion. Okay, so that sounds, okay, so let's go back here. So, what about button number three? Same thing. Oops, I forgot one more thing. Now, under lion, under the sound button two, let's come over here now. Did I set the properties to, oh, must be start. Okay, make sure it's start. Okay, or else you won't get to hear anything. Okay, so let's go to sound button number three. Create a new layer, call it sounds. Come here. Okay, you can press uh, F6. Okay, and we gotta take monkey, gotta just drag it over here. Oh sorry, not monkey, it's elephant. Okay, so come over here, look at properties, see it's elephant. So choose start. Okay, so let's just test it and try it out. Okay. So that's it, we added sound to our video. Now, the next thing to do is that we gotta consider how to add a flash uh, video into our, our presentation. Now, the problem, the one thing about uh, doing multimedia on the internet is that there are just so many video formats and every format has its advantages. Some has more advantages some has, and some has disadvantages. Uh, you gotta watch out for browser compatibility compatibility problems, problems, some 
older platforms can't play this format or that format. So we want to try to find a format that's the, that we can use or manipulate easily. Uh, okay, now there are two options to display video. Uh, one thing is one option is to keep the video uh, separate from our flash and just use a playback component from flash to play the video. The other way is to embed it into our flash file. Now we need to have it in the prop in the right format. Now the format for Flash is Flash Video, which uses extension of FLV or F4V. F4V uh, uh, supports the H.264 standard, a state of the art video codec that delivers high quality video with remarkably efficient compression. Uh, a codec, a codec stands for co compression decompression, is the method computers use to compress a video file to save space and then decompress it to play back. FLV is a standard format for previous versions of Flash and uses the oldest codecs like Sorensen Spark or Owen onto VP6. Okay, so how do you convert uh, our video? So let's go over to our uh, launch pad. Okay, so what we have is this uh, program over here, Adobe Media Encoder. So let's launch Adobe Media Encoder. And it comes installed with our Flash Professional CS6 or CS5.5. Okay, so over here is our queue. Over this is our preset browser. It's an encoding panel, and these are our watch folders. So let's just choose file and add source. Okay, or we can actually just uh, add use the plus button over here. Okay, so let's just go over to our start. Okay, let's go to. Okay, let's come over here, go to lessons. Okay, let's eight, lesson eight, start folder. Okay, now there is a file there. We got to choose our penguins, penguins, uh, penguins movie here. Okay, and we just gotta click open. Okay. So now we just added to the queue and we gotta convert it into the FLV or F4V format. Okay. Now, converting is easy, it just depends on how large our video is. Okay, so in the, for, in the format here, we can choose all the different formats. You can change it to MPEG, JPEG, Blu-ray, DVD, uh, what, AIFF, just the audio, H.264, whatever format. So we just leave it F, as F4V. Okay, under the preset options, we got to choose Web. Web 322, 4x3 project frame rate, 500 kilobits per second. Okay. So there are many preset options available, the options to determine the dimensions. Okay, so this converts it to an average size for display in a web browser. Now for op output file, okay, now I'm just going to come back here. Okay, so notice over here, so I already converted it. Uh, in a previous lesson. So I'm just going to delete this one to show you that it actually does convert it. Okay, so I'm just going to come over here. Okay, and I'm just going to open up this one to show you that an actual file is created. Okay, so I'm just going to come here and click over here. So I'm just going to call it Penguins F4V. Okay, you can call it any other name you like. Okay, just it's up to you. Okay, the original video won't be uh, uh, deleted. Okay, so that's it. So let's click on this button, the start button, and let's watch it convert. So notice there is a conversion here. So notice there's a Penguin's F4V file created over here. And that's it. It's done. Okay, so how do we know it's done? Okay, so if we look over here, there is a done status and there's a tick mark over there. Now, another way we can convert videos is to create watch folders. We can actually take a, put a folder over here and it will convert all our files for us. Okay, so this is useful when you need different formats for high bandwidth and low bandwidth viewers. So we can take like uh, one file and keep one for... Uh, people who have high broadband and people are using mobile devices so in low quality, quality video. Okay, so let's look at our different options that we have available. Uh, okay, so uh, you can crop and resize to specific uh, dimensions. You can convert a snippet to video, adjust the type of compression, or even apply filters to video. So uh, to display encoding options, choose, okay, edit. 
Okay? And we can reset status. So notice reset. Okay, everything's reset. So, um, uh, okay. And then we can choose the different formats again that we want. Okay, so uh, we can choose another format we want or something else. Or preset. Um, okay. And, or we can choose edit export settings. Okay, whatever to... Okay, you click on this one here. So edit export settings and we can choose what uh, this, what set settings that you want to edit it in so here now over here we have a crop we have cropping options here are the timing options here are the cue points here are the preset options this is the summary of the export settings this is the advanced video and audio encoding so okay so if you only want to show a portion of video we can crop it if we haven't okay so let's just choose Okay, choose the source tab over here and we just gonna click this one. So this is a crop button here. Okay, so drag the sides. Okay, so notice I can come here. I can actually crop this crop our video and you go output, you can see what is the output here. Okay. Uh, so what you have over here is going to be removed. Okay, now if you want to keep the crop in a standard proportion, okay, we, got, we can just come over here and choose 4 by 3, for example. This will have a standard proportion for our, our, our video, okay? So you want to see what is output, so it will just show you this that we've tried to crop out from. So it just takes this to show. Okay, so what else can we do, Vic? We can actually choose scale to fit, uh, scale, scale to fill, stretch to fill, or scale to fit with black borders, or change output size to match the source size. So we choose scale to fit, it will scale everything to our crop button, or we can scale to fill, or can stretch to fill, scale to fill with black borders, okay? Or we can change output to match the source. So scale to fit, uh, adjust the dimensions of the crop as back borders to fill the output file. So for example, let's say I, I put I, I put something over here. Let's say I choose uh, none. Uh. Okay, so let's say I just I did something like this. What will happen to the output? Okay. Scale to fit would just do this. Scale to fill. Stretch to fill. Scale black borders. No, notice there's black borders here, okay? or change output size to match the source. Okay, so scale fill adjust the dimensions of the crop. Scale to stretch to fill adjust the dimension by distorting the image to fill the size of the output file. Okay. And change output match size to match source size, change the dimension output file to match the crop dimensions. Okay, so this one, so basically this means that this one changes the output, this one changes the input. Okay, so these are add black borders. This one, this one, this, this one stretch would distort. Okay, this one would uh, adjust the crop to fill the size of output. Okay, and this one will add black borders. So scaling would add uh, scale to fit and scale to fit. Will, or any scale to fit would add black borders. Okay, and scale to fill fill or. Uh, stretch to fill will adjust the dimension of the crop. Okay. So what else can we do with our video? Okay. Now not just uh, not just do we can we do this? Okay, we can can we do this scaling? Uh, what we can also do is that we can change the length of our video. So for example, I can come over here and say, okay, let this maybe uh, this is the playhead. This is called the timeline indicator or the playhead. Okay, so okay, so let's say we, we we stop over here. Now notice the timing. By the way, this this number actually stands for hours, second hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. So when once we hit twenty nine frames, it goes over to the next second. Okay, so it is not uh, milliseconds. Okay, this number of frames. Okay, so um, so let's say we want to start from here. We just have to just click here and notice the, the video just starts over here. And if we want it to stop over here, we just uh, maybe uh, we come over here. 
Okay, you say, that's it. And then maybe you click here over here. So this means the video will stop over there. Okay, so again, so so that's that's how it moves the position of playhead. So, uh, or we can actually just move this over here up to us. If we want to move it, we can actually move this over here. Okay. Now uh, we can move everything back, or we can actually reset it by just coming back here and just and kind of clip, and everything is reset back to the uh, back to the original positions. Now, so we just gotta click on. So that's all. So just click on cancel because we're not gonna do any editing over here. Okay. So again. Uh, so, so you will want to come here. Remember, it's, you want to edit it, just come here, select the video that we want, file, just choose export settings, okay? So that's how we do it. Okay, so... Uh, okay, so at the bottom of our... bottom left of our export settings, by the way, so I'm just going to come back here again, edit export settings, there's this thing called Q points. Okay, Q points um, is where we can uh, special markers that we can where flash can recognize Q points, so we can navigate to the video, so we can make it an interactive video. Now, um, over here in our advanced video and audio options, we can choose the different preset options here. Uh, there's uh, presets web, we've got advanced video options. So uh, let's make sure that export video and, uh, and export video, okay, make sure this is set, export video and audio are selected. Okay, but we've got to export it to a larger size. Okay, let's click on the format here. Okay, so it shows we are using FOV format. Okay. And let's click on the video tab again. So notice the size is 320 by 240. Okay, so I'm just going to expand this a little bit here. Okay, so I'm going to uh, okay, make sure that this is, uh, is, is, it keeps it proportional. And just going to type here 480, okay, for the width. So notice over here it changes 360. So it actually uh, changes the width of our video. Okay, the height ultimate change, and we're going to click OK. So notice now it says here it's a custom uh, format. And we just got to create another file. Okay, it's just got to start, yes. So just go off. So notice it just uh, encodes it to a different format. Okay, so notice there's Penguins 1F4V over here, okay? So let's just remove this one, delete this one over here, and just move it to trash. Come here and let's just rename this file as penguins1. Okay. Now let's say we like the, the, the format here and we want to use it for other videos. So we can save our settings to be reused. Okay, so we got to choose, let's choose, I'll choose this one here. Okay, I've got to choose edit. Reset status. Okay, I'm going to choose edit export settings. Okay, so in the in the preset here, this can now notice there's this uh, this arrow down arrow here. This is actually the save preset preset uh, button here, and we can choose this one and just give a name: animal video. Resize. Okay, so let's click OK. So now we have a preset setting that we can use. So let's return to the queue of our videos here. So let's click on OK. Okay, so notice over here it says Animal Video Resize. So we can actually have, uh, have different settings here for our video. So next time we want something, we can actually choose something else. Okay. 
So uh, now that we've successfully completed uh, our video to the correct flash compatible format, we can use it in our flash zoo kiosk project. Okay, so let's go back to our flash uh, video and uh, flash uh, working copy in our Adobe Flash. Okay, so let's select the keyframe of the penguins here in this penguins layer. Notice there's a keyframe here, penguins. Okay, and let's choose file, import, import video. Okay, the import to video file appears. Okay, and it, okay, so it says, where's your video file? Okay, so it says, load external video with playback component. Okay, so let's just browse over here and we've got to choose our start folder. So we can choose our penguins. Okay, let's choose our penguins uh, FOV file. So notice the path to our video appears. Okay, so select load external video with playback and click next or continue. Okay. Um, okay, so now it shows you the skin that we that there will be played put on the video here. Okay, so let's just select the third option here. One, two, three. Minimal flat custom play color playback seat counter volume mute full. Okay, so it just shows what is the video over here. There are three different categories by the way. There are some as the minimal one is the skin over, and one is the skin under. Now the skin that are skin under are controls that appear below the video. Okay. And the skins that begin with skin over are controls that overlap the bottom edge. Okay? Uh, one of them will, be, will only appear when you do a mouse over. Okay, so let's just choose the one. Okay, so for color, we've got to select uh, 333. Okay, select this color here. Okay, 33333. Three, 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 three. And then for the alpha, we've got to choose about uh, 75%. Okay. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so let's click on next. Okay, uh, it says, okay, this just tells you to review a font information. It's the file you want to convert to, to load. Okay, it will be this, this file. Uh, it will be converted, created on stage, and uh, okay, whatever the skin is copied to your FLA, that sort of thing. Okay, so just click on finish. That's it. And notice the video is placed in your in your file. Okay, and notice over here there's actually a VF FLV playback uh, playback uh, skin that's added to your library here. Okay, we can even click this. The Magellanic here. Penguins habitat on the. Okay, within our flash, and we can even do this. So let's click on this one over here. So let's come over and click on. The Magellanic Penguin's habitat on the coast of South America can actually... Yep. So that's how you just add a video in Flash. Okay, so the other, um, the other videos are already encoded. So, uh, so we just do the same thing. Okay, so we just got to come over here. Let's come over to Mandrel. Do the same thing. File. Import to stage. Okay, so the next one is Mandrel, so uh, we got import uh, the Mandrel FLV. Okay, so over there, load, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so make sure it's the same settings. Okay, so 3333, 75%. Okay, next, finish. Okay, we can put it on stage. Select the next one, tiger. Uh, insert, okay, sorry, file import to stage. Okay, make sure it's the same. It's the same settings, uh, by the way, 3333 three, 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 and 
and the alpha is 75 percent make sure it's a three third one okay so finish And we gotta just choose the sorry, no, just choose the come back to lion here. Same thing, file, import stage. So you gotta choose lion, open. Seventy five percent. Enter next. Finish. Okay, so over there, it's, that's it. Okay, so uh, okay, so that's it. So if we we do a test again. The Magellanic penguin. The typical lion diet consists of zebra. The Magellan. Okay, so that's how we just get video in our timeline. Very easy. Now, uh, the, the FLV component lets you control the, how the video plays, where it plays automatically, other expects. So to change the autoplay option, okay, so... Um, okay, so let's just choose one of the videos over here. Okay, just choose a video. Okay, let's go to properties over here. Okay, so come over here. No, notice there's autoplay here, so we just got to turn this on off, and that's it. So, so what it, sh it does is that the video will be will not play. So let's just test one more time. Hey, okay, sorry. So not all to play. The Magellanic penguins habitat. So notice when I click on. Katanga line, it doesn't, it doesn't start at all, Un unless I play the playback. The button. typical lion die. Okay, so that's it. So that's autoplay. Okay, now what, what else can we do? We can hide the controller and only display it so that when the user rolls their mouse over the video. Okay, so there's this, this thing called skin auto hide. So it auto hides it. Okay. So let's try one more. So notice over here is skin, skin auto high. It's over for, for lion here. So let's test one more time. So click on lion. So notice only when we do a mouse over, does the controls appear. The typical lion. Okay, uh, okay we can also change the transparency of the skin. So let's select the, this video again here. Okay, so okay for look. Let's go to skin background alpha. Alone. Notice this point seven five. Okay, we can actually change it to zero for totally transparent, or one for totally opaque. Okay, so we can just point five for example. Okay, so notice it's more transparent. If I choose zero, it's 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 totally transparent over here. Okay, so to change the color of the skin, we can also change the skin over here. Okay, we can choose a different skin. For example, I prefer maybe I want I want to choose red. Okay, it's just gonna increase the. So notice it's a red control button here. And we can also change the, the, the source of the file by just choosing file from here. Okay, so those, these are some of the options that we can use. Okay, so what else can we do now? The next part we got to do is that we can work with video and transparency. Okay, so let's just come back in. I'm just going to move this file over here. Okay. Um, Hold on. Let's uh. go move this one over here. Okay, because this one determines how everything is moved. OK, 
okay. So notice it's over here, over here. Okay, let's just play our thing again. The Magellanic Penguin's habitat on the... The typical lion diet consists of zebra, giraffe... Okay, so... Now that's, uh, that's simple videos. Now we can also do things like transparencies in video. Now transparencies in video are only supported in the FLV format using the on to VP6 codec. So when we encode a video with alpha channel from Adobe Media Encoder, let's be sure to choose, okay, we want to have transparency. Let's, we go back to Adobe Media Encoder. When you choose um, edit export settings, Okay, notice is the video tab here. Okay. Uh, okay, so we under format, format, we got to choose. On to codec. Okay, so we got to just choose codec which will be on two video format. Okay, so let's just make sure this FLV, yeah? FLV. So over here, notice this encode alpha channel over here. So if you want a transparency, once you got encode alpha channel, that will be done. Okay, so you must use FLV format. Uh, uh, which is to create the transparency. Now, we've already done that for you, so uh, let's just... So I'm going to show you what a transparent video will look like. Okay, so let's go over to our timeline back over here. So let's come over here, sound video, right? And we've got to create one more layer, and we've got to call it pop-up video. Okay. Now we go a call of key uh, frame 50 and we go and set another key frame at frame 86. So let's come over to frame 50. Okay, and we go and set key frame. And we go go frame 86. Okay, over here and we go insert key frame. So we got put a video of our zoo director uh, director's introduction. Okay, at the end of the musical introduction. Okay, so let's come over here. Frame 50, choose file, import, import video. Okay, so let's browse it. Let's go to start folder. And we've got to come and choose pop-up FLV. Okay, and we've got to just click uh, next. Okay. So... We gotta say choose the same skin, minimal three. Okay, and click next. Okay, and we gotta click finish. Okay, so you notice this guy's video is over here. So let's uh, preview the video. Good day, good day. My name, my name is Bill Smith. I'm yep. So that's that there. Okay, so let's just test our movie here. Okay, you can, the, the quick command, if you don't know, is command enter or command return. Good day, good day. My name, my name is Bill Smith. I'm the same director here at the Shadow Lab. Why is that? Is that? Avoid, avoid. Okay, so let's see. Uh, uh, go, 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 so that's how it works. Now, how do you get the background to be transparent? Okay. Now, this one goes to do video editing. So I'm not going to show you so much about what tell um, demonstrate for you. But what happens is that normally they shoot themselves in front of a green screen and it's removed using Adobe After Effects, either using uh, the, the keying color effects or garbage mask to remove it. Okay, and what and and it and then it is uh, 
it is also exported to the FLV format directly from the video editing application. Uh, and it also has the alpha channel embedded into it. Okay, it ensures that the transparency is there uh, in our video. Okay, so, so far we've uh, done so far, right? It's been 50 minutes in our video. So, we're going to go into the next part, which is inserting cue points. Now, cue points enable us to jump from part to part of our video. Okay, and this allows us to utilize the power of Adobe Flash and ActionScript to, to know at which part of the video and in which we can uh, display certain things in our, in our Flash uh, animation. So let's just select frame 50 again. Okay, make sure this is selected, frame 50. Select the video of this zoo director. I'm going to play the video here. And we got to pause it when it says G'day. my name is Paul my Smith. My name is Paul Smith. So we, we got to pause it right here when it says my name is Paul Smith, okay? My name is Paul Smith. So the time is about two seconds, okay? So if you don't, you can see it, it's about two seconds here. So over at Q points, we got to click plus. So notice it says two seconds here. Okay, now we got to click on the name, click on the, on the part over here and we got to just call, call it Name, name Q. Enter. Let's continue playing it and we pause it when he says, click on a video. I'm the zoo director here at Sherwood Wildlife Preserve. Before you go into the park, we'd like you to learn a few things about the amazing animals we have here at Sherwood. So click on a video. So click, when he says click on video, let's create another Q point here. So it says about you know, 13 seconds, okay. And then we got to just call this Q point. No, sorry, video Q. Okay. Okay, so if you're, if you're not sure, okay, now the book, I know the book says 12, so you're more comfortable, you can actually edit this one and say 12 if you want to. Okay. So at the 12 second mark, okay, when it says click on a sound, let's go on to say, let's go on to a video. Click on a sound. So click on a sound. Okay, so we gotta click another uh, cue point here. So we gotta call this sound cue at about 14 seconds. Okay, so let's continue playing it all the way to the end. Have a great day at the park. Okay, when it finishes, we gotta click one more, which is end cue. Okay, which is at the 17 uh, second mark. Now we got to add action script to detect the cue points and respond to them. So let's open the code snippets panel, which is over here. Okay, so this code snippets. So expand the audio and video uh, folder here. Okay, we're gonna click on this one on cue point event. Okay. Uh, so this, this uh, code here uh, triggers a function whenever a cue point is selected. So let's click on the show code here. Okay, drag over here. Notice this instance name here. Now I'm going to just come right over here so that we can see uh, everything here. Come over here. Okay, let's come here. Drag it all the way. Okay, notice this instance name. Now we've got to drag it, drag our pick whip over to the video. So come here and go and drag it over here. Okay, notice it highlights the video of the stage director. Okay, let go. Now notice it asks you for name of this video. So just enter Paul Smith video to give the symbol instance a name. And then we got to click OK. So remember, we must give names to everything before uh, action script can use it. And we got to click insert. So it says code snippet inserted. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, the, this flag here indicates where the new action script is inserted. So it shows it's inserted right over here in our actions uh, layer here. So let's select this, this frame over here and you've got to come over here to action script. And, and notice the 
video is actually the code is actually added into our action script. Now the stop there was already added in previously before, so uh, let's just go put an extra few lines there. Okay, so now this is our cue point handler. Okay, so we just got come here and it says start your custom code. This, uh, so we gotta just come here and delete everything here. I'm gonna just put in our custom code if event dot info dot name equals to. So it just says that when we got an event and if the information information of the name, these are built-in properties, equals to name Q. Okay, and we can come here and says go to and stop zoo director. If event info dot name equals to video Q. Go to and stop videos. If event dot info dot name equals to okay. By the way, I uh, make sure there are two equal signs. Ah, uh. okay. This uh, this is a mistake. Of people often make a uh, equals and equals equals are two different operators. Go to and stop sounds. If event dot info dot name equals equals to and Q go to and stop. Okay, so just do a final code check to make sure everything's okay. Oh, well, is there any errors? No errors, okay. Well, there's no errors for now. There might be runtime errors, okay. So now that we've added that code, okay, so now in our timeline, we already have several um, frames that have been, keyframes that have already been given names. One is home, zoo director, videos, sounds. So let's just choose a zoo director frame over here in the highlights. Okay, so what we're going to do is that we are going to move this Zoo Director movie clip. Okay, and we're going to just drag it over here. Okay. So we're just going to put it somewhere about over here. Okay, then we next got to choose videos. Okay, so let's select the rectangle tool. And in the options, okay, properties, we are going to choose, okay, a, a red, okay, we got to choose a red color, red color stroke, and for the fill, we got to choose nothing. Okay, and we got to just draw a rectangle. Okay, make sure the stroke is three, by the way. Three, okay, so three. And we got to draw a rectangle around our video buttons over here. Yep. Got to select the sounds over here. And we got to just come to do the same thing. So you got to drag a box right over here. Okay, and so that's it. So let's just test again. And hopefully there's nothing wrong. Good day, my name is Paul Smith. I'm the zoo director here at Sherwood Wildlife Preserve. Before you go into the park, We'd like you to learn a few things about the amazing animals we have here at Sherwood. So click on a video, so a click on a sound, the video, have a great the day at the park. Yeah. Okay, so we've done the synchronizing with video. Okay, so let's just finish up our presentation here. So, uh, okay, you notice this playback still remains here. So let's 
click on this one over here. So let's just selection tool, select the zoo director. So we, we, don't, we don't want to show this in our video. So we got to come to properties here. And under skin, we got to choose none. Okay, and we'll click OK. So notice there's no uh, there's no control over here, and uh, and to let's rearrange it so that it comes down to the bottom here, so that it looks much more uh, professional with the edge aligning below. So it looks looks more part of the video, the whole presentation. Okay, so let's test one more time. Good day, my name is Paul Smith. I'm the zoo director here at Sherwood Wildlife Preserve. Before you go into the park, we'd like you to learn a few things about the amazing animals we have here at Sherwood. Okay, so that's it. So notice that we have this uh, video there. Okay, so just the only thing more, one more thing is uh, we want to just move this slightly off. It's, it just doesn't seem right over there. So I'm going to put it over there. And maybe move this guy more to the center. Okay. Finally, we have our last last section, which is to learn how to embed flash video. So we've learned how to uh, add cue points to synchronize video. Uh, we learned how to integrate uh, videos into our flash. Now, uh, we can embed video uh, into our Flash presentations. Now, embedding video is supported by Flash Player version 6, which should be okay. I mean, I don't think many people will be using Flash, the later versions of Flash. However, there are certain limitations um, about embedded video. Uh, you can't maintain audio synchronization for video that's over 120 seconds. So that's two minutes. So you can't have synchronization for video that's over two minutes. Maximum length of embedded movies is 16,000 frames. So that's, uh, let's see, about one. So 100 frame, 1,000 is about, uh, about three, three seconds, three, three times 160 seconds. So six, uh, seven minutes or so. Okay, so another uh, drawback is that when you put video in, your flash is really huge. Okay, so uh, a lot of times, if you don't want to make the person wait, try not to embed video. Uh, the other thing is that you must make sure that your frame rate of your video is the same, as your FLV must be the same as our flash file. And you must use the FLV format. Okay, so it is part of our flash file. You must use FLV format. It must be same uh, frame rate. Us, our embedded video will not play at uh, intended speed. So make sure at the same frame rate. So when you do your video encoding, make sure you change the frame rate. So let's just learn how to encode our FLV for embedding. So let's go back to our Adobe Media Encoder. Oops, we just closed it. Okay, so make sure open our video Adobe Media Encoder. Okay, so we have our file here. So let's just add another one, file, add source. And we've got to choose the polar bear movie, open. Format, we've got to choose, oops. We've got to choose FLV. Under preset, we got to choose, we will click on this one. Okay, we got, and then we got to choose FLV, the video tab here. We're going to set the frame rate to, hold on, frame rate to 24 frames per second. So notice output is 24 frames. If we do the same as source, uh, well, 
it was 20 frames per second, see? So we got to send it to 24. So 24 frames per second. Okay, and make sure this is turned off. Okay. So let's deselect the export audio, okay, because we don't need the sound. And we gotta click OK. So let's uh, just uh, just play and encode this video here. Okay, notice that because our previous video was ready, it tried to encode the Penguin's movie again. Now it's encoding our bear movie, polar bear movie. So notice there's a polar bear FLV file created. So just now, 239, just created just now. So now that we have our FLV, we can put it into Flash and embed it in the timeline. So let's, let's go back to our Flash. Let's go all the way to the first frame of our pop-up video. Choose the first frame. Choose file. Import to import video. Okay, so we got browse. Let's choose our polar bear FLV format. Okay. Open. Click on next. Okay. Uh, Okay, click on next. Oh, hold on. We got to just choose embedding. We got embedded. Sorry, we got to go back here and choose embedded. Okay, so it's embedded video. So let's go back. So when it comes to embedded video, place the instance on the stage. Okay, uh, don't choose this one. Don't choose include audio. Don't choose expand timeline. Okay, then click next. So it says we got to take uh, this video and it will be embedded into our stage here. So just click finish. So notice now there is actually a video on stage here. Okay, so let's come back over here, adjust the position of our video. You've got to put it somewhere over here. Okay, as we look on our, our our playback over here, notice there is our, our video polar bear FLV is already added into our library here. Now, it's sometimes think, useful to think of embedded video as a multi-frame symbol, um, just very much like a symbol with animated animation. You can convert embedded video to a movie clip and then motion tween it to create interesting effects. So we got to do a fade out uh, format. Okay, so now let's just show what happens before we're putting the fade out effect. Okay, so it just disappears. Good day. My name is Paul. So we gotta do a fade out effect. So let's select the video here, the video here, and we gotta click on create motion tween. It says it cannot because it must be converted to a symbol. So say okay. It says uh, the video requires it's not enough. Okay, so uh, the selected times do you want to require yes? Click yes. Okay. So, no, it doesn't add frames here, it adds frames inside here because this is our movie clip symbol. Okay. Okay, so let's select this motion tween. Okay, and just select the motion editor here. Okay, so let's select everything over here. Okay, and notice over here we have this timeline. Okay, motion editor. Come over to color effects, click on alpha. Okay, Just make sure frame one is selected. Make sure frame one is selected. Okay, make sure this frame one is selected. Make sure alpha is 100%. Okay, we gotta go to frame number 30. Okay, and we gotta right click over here, right click this one over here, add keyframe. So an alpha keyframe appears at frame 30. We gotta go to frame 49. 
five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right click over here, add keyframe. And we're gonna drag it down to zero. Okay, so over here it says zero. So we have our alpha alpha value over here. So now you want to have a look at it bigger. Maybe you want to see the graph. Okay, let's see whether I can expand this. Okay, so I'm going to just expand the graph here. change the graph size if I can change the graph size okay so you can see that the graph goes over like this okay so this is a graph this is the number of frames I can see. Uh -huh. So you can see the graph over here. So over here you can see our graph. Okay, one more thing is that we didn't put this one over here. Frame 30, let's go back frame 30. And I think we just uh, put the alpha to 100%. Okay, make sure it's 100%. So you can see that uh, in our graph here, so it goes 100% over here, goes up to frame 30, and then as it goes down from frame 30 to 49, it goes down to 0%. Okay, so that's it. Let's test our movie. Fade out. Good day. The video My name here. is Paul Smith. I'm the zoo director. <laughs> we got a video. The Magellanic penguins. Here we got a line here. The typical lion diet can. Okay, so that's about it. Okay, so you want to just make it all. Uh, uniform, you can just come back to line here, select this one, go back to properties, uh, turn back autoplay, change the background to 3333, three, 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 and uh, we're done. Okay, And if you just want to really uh, make it sure that the size is uniform, so make sure it's the position of the X and Y is the same. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that uh, 480 by 320, this 480 by 360, 480 by 320, 480 by 320. So if you want to make it exactly the same position, 42.4, okay, so maybe we want to change this to 40 by 150. And same thing over here, 40. 150 and come over here 40 150 and 40 150 so at least there's a uniform positioning of everything here The Magellanic penguins have the typical lion diet consists of zebra, giraffe. Yep, and that's it. Okay, so what else did we do? Okay, oh, we 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 hit the skin by the way. So 
Oh well. Do we have a skin? Auto hide? Nah, so we don't need to auto hide the skin. So let's show one more time. The typical lion diet consists of zebra, giraffe, buff. So make sure this off. The typical lion diet consists of zebra, giraffe, buffalo, will. So thank you very much for this, uh, watching this tutorial. And we'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you and goodbye.